uh, I am one of Rodo. I'm Christopher Cunningham. And this is Rodo the Age of Masks. So this is a uh, an action adventure TV series, uh, aimed at kids 8 to 12. It's going to be a 2D animated series and um, uh, oh, 12 episodes of 24 minutes. There we go. Okay, so Rojo, for those who don't know, actually means spirit in Swahili, and we want to take that concept and, and incorporate it into the rest of the show. Unless three awkward teens can open up and work together, even their magical animal masks won't be enough to help them save the city from terrifying monsters. Okay, so in this world of Rojo, our city, uh, Cape Town, is it's slightly further in the future and there are these monsters called the voids that plague our city. So it is up to these individuals powered by uh, powerful, sorry, powerful magical uh, animal masks to defend off these creatures. And so the way this kind of works is that uh, through generations, these masks are, are uh, I guess, <laughs> passed down. Passed down, yeah, they're passed down from generation to generation and uh, parents give, the, give these masks to their kids to be, take up the new responsibility of being rogue. So our main character is uh, Leo Landers, and he's the chief of Rojo. So after uh, his aunt passes away, uh, Leo inherits her chief of mask, uh, which grants him the ability to achieve the super speed and super agility. Uh, Leo's a very quiet and introverted kid. He doesn't want to be a hero. He doesn't want to go out and save anyone. Um, and he's also dealing with a lot of anger over the loss of his aunt. But then comes along Izara, who claims that she's actually from another world. And so she approaches Leo and tells him that he actually has a greater destiny, a destiny to save the city of Cape Town from these deployments. But she need, he needs her help in order for her to, in order for her to train her kid. And um, through her skill and through her experience uh, being a rogue, she uh, uses her blue crane mask to help him and help save the, the city from the voids. But they soon realize that they need a little bit more help. Leo's a little too experienced and she can't do everything herself. So they need a little bit of muscle. So they call him Bricky, the hippo robo. Bricky is a boisterous uh, school bully at Leo's school. And he's also, of course, the hippo, Rojo. Uh, he joins the team, he brings comedy, he brings lightheartedness to these stressful situations, which brings him into clash with Azara, who can be a bit serious and, uh, and overconfident. Uh, Ricky is insecure about being a hero and whether he should be a hero, and that's something we, we explore with this character. And then there are the monsters themselves, the Devoids. So these creatures are uh, mutated uh, animals and their heads are actually these deformed versions of uh, traditional animal masks. And depending on the uh, mask themselves, they get different they have different powers, different ways of destruction, different ways to uh, terrorize the, the people of the city. And then we have our villain, Chimera. Now Chimera has three masks combined into one, and those are the lion, goat, and snake masks, which give him different powers. These make him quite a powerful match for our trio of heroes, and uh, often he comes out on top when they have to fight. And now, for the visual tone and style of the show, we want to uh, keep it really fun, really bright. Uh, we want to incorporate old 80s, 90s comic books, and incorporate that into uh, traditional African stories, African wear, African uh, outfits, and uh, for the story itself, although there are very serious um, internal conflicts with each character, each character going through something traumatic, um, we still want to have a lot of the comedic moments during fight scenes, during um, and little interactions between the characters, and really explore what it's like to be a kid. Just while, making it fun and, and exciting. Yeah, and all the while, you know, what do they do when they're trying to fight these monsters, you know? Okay, and then of course it's set in Cape Town. It's set around our iconic landmarks that you see there, like Table Mountain and Cape Town Stadium. Uh, it was very important that we wanted our local kids to feel that where they're from was being represented in a TV show and that they could recognize these places as places they've been. And 
And another thing that was very important was local music. Um, we want all our music to be local, not only in genre and an artist, but definitely have the, the, the African authenticity um, that we know too well. Cool, and for future seasons, we want to figure out where uh, its art comes from. We, we want to figure out, uh, find out more about the, uh, the mythology of these, uh, of these creatures. Uh, we want to know who uh, Kamira is and we'll find out who all these different characters under the mask truly are, um, both in the physical sense and also the uh, metaphorical and analogous uh, yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so uh, I'm Christopher Cunningham. And I'm Carl Rodin. And we're Studio Jembe. Thank you for listening. Thanks so much, guys. And we're going to hand over to our judges now, starting with David. Um, I think it's fantastic. I think that the idea of taking um, cultural icons like masks, etc., from, from anywhere around the, the, kind of the tribal thing, incorporating it into there's something very gamer about it. Talking about gamers. Um, I, I think it's good. I think there's something there. The biggest thing for me is. No villain is evil if you don't know where they come from. And it would be cool. so why? And my biggest question to that is so why is this person a villain? And I think if you go into any big kind of series or something like that where there's a villain, there's always that origin, right? Why? Why are they? Why are they? And for me, that was the one thing missing. I, I get all the rest of it. I think it's all fantastic. I think there's a bunch of fun to be had, but I miss. The, the the origin of the villain. I think uh, uh, so. Uh, we didn't want it to give too much away, which was the problem we kept running into. Um, uh, and I think I forgot to mention that Chimera is he's stealing masks, so that's what brings him into conflict with our, our heroes. Is that he's actually trying to collect and, and steal all the masks. Yeah, well done, guys. Um, I love the real issues, like the reluctant heroes. You know, they've got issues. Thank you so much to Team Rojo and thank you so much to our judges.